And hello Facebook, Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. Uh, I was trying to get my stuff situated here. Uh, thank you, thank you for those of you that are joining me live and thank you for those of you that are watching the replay and listening to the podcast. Um, you know I come on every week because I want to give you whatever prophetic words the Holy Ghost gives me to share with the body of Christ. That's what we want to do. Okay, so let's say a word of prayer, and we're going to dive right in. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your kindness. I thank you for your mercy and your faithfulness, oh God. It just blows my mind, oh God. I just come before you in faith. I surrender to you, oh God. Please forgive me for any sin. Wash me clean and fill me with the Holy Ghost, oh God. Fill my mind, my mouth, my tongue, my hands, gestures, everything, oh God, that you might speak and breathe through me, that your spirit might have the ascendance and that you might be the Lord of this broadcast and breathe out what you want to be said and for the body of Christ to receive for its edification and your glorification. And we thank you for it and we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen and amen. So, <clears throat> my tagline, you hear me say it every week, is that God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to his servants, the prophets. Let me say that one more time. God already told you what was going to happen if you had just listened to his servants, the prophets, okay? And so God gives us prophetic words to help us stay in sync and in season with him. So when God releases a word, now for those of you that are coming on, please like and share the broadcast as you come on. Please like and share so that other people can be blessed by it. But when God gives a prophetic word, when God releases a word, it's for the blessing and the edification of the body. So you want to receive it, you want to walk in it, and you want to share it with other people. Okay? All right. So uh, the year is winding up, and praise God for the end, uh, end of 2019, because everybody didn't make it all the way through to this point. Uh, praise God that I'm still here, and you should be thanking God that you're still here, because every day is a blessing. Every single day is a blessing from God. So today what the prophetic word is, is who are you? Who are you? Now, if you've been watching my broadcast and you've been paying attention to what the Spirit's been saying, uh, starting as far back even as the summer, there's been a progression. And wherever it is that we are in Christ, the Spirit of God keeps us in step with what the head of the church is doing so we can stay in step and in sync with the Lord. Okay? That's the whole point of the prophetic so we can hear what God is saying right now. So all the, going all the way back through the summer, you can see that there's been a progression with what God has had to say. So today's prophet word is, who are you? Who are you? And I got a prophetic word I want to release with it, and we have a scripture reference that we want to look at. And I think I want to look at the scripture first, and then I'm going to release that prophetic word over you. Okay? We're going to go to the book of Judges. The book of Judges is in the Old Testament. Um, the book of Judges, the Judges were one of the systems that God used to lead Israel. Because he had Moses, and then he had Joshua, then they had the judges, then they went back to the prophets, and Samuel was the last uh, great prophet. Then they went to the monarchy, they went to the kings, with King Saul being the first king that the people chose, and then King David being the king that God chose. But God had different systems of leading his people under the old covenant. So that's what the book of Judges is about, the system of the judges, where God would have raise up a judge to fight against their enemies and to make sure that Israel stayed in the will of God as they lived their lives. So we're going to talk about Samson today, and that's in Judges chapter 13. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Again, the children, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. Now there was a certain man from Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed now you are barren and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink, and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. A lot going on there. But I gave you the backstory in terms of the different systems that God was using to lead the people. 
first verse talks about the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. For 40 years. One of the ways God judged his people then and one of the ways God judges people now is that he will deliver you into the hand of your enemies when you backslide. When you turn away from God, when you turn away from your commitment with God, when you turn away from what you know of the Lord, when you turn away and you decide to go and do evil in the sight of the Lord, you decide to serve other gods, or you decide to ignore what the Lord is saying, or you decide not to live by what you know, and you decide to do what we call backsliding, then the Lord will deliver you into the hands of your enemies. Why does the Lord deliver you into the hands of your enemies? To chastise you. To show you that you don't have any business listening to anybody but him. But if you want to throw that away and listen to other gods or you want to act like worldly people or you want to act like you don't know the Lord, then the Lord's going to let them people, let them spirits, let them whatever you've chosen go ahead on and have you. And by the time them folks get through with you, you'll be so happy to come back to the Lord. Uh, but here he delivered them to the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. That's two generations. Every generation is 20 years. That's two generations of people that grew up under the oppression of the Philistines. So, I mean, uh, so it's not good to backslide. It's not good to turn away from the Lord and turn away from what you know, because then you're going to come under judgment and get chastised. But God didn't leave them there because God never leaves us. He doesn't abandon us there, even when we're being judged. Now, there was a certain man from Zorah of the family of the Danites, that means he was from the tribe of Dan. When Azor was the city he was from, the tribe, the Isra uh, Israeli tribe he was from was Dan, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was bare, and she didn't have any children. The angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said, Indeed, now you are barren, and have borne no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink. Now, if you don't know anything about Nazarites, Nazarites were uh, ones who <clears throat> took vows unto God to be separated or to be consecrated unto the service of the Lord. And when God was talking about the birth of Samson here, he was saying that Samson was to be a Nazarite. That meant that <clears throat> you abstained from all alcohol that came from grapes. It meant that you did not cut your hair, but you allowed the locks of your hair to grow. And it meant that you did not make yourself impure by having contact with corpses or graves or uh, even those of family members. Okay? And there's some other requirements too, but those are just some of the basic ideas about being a Nazarite. Because God was trying to take these people and set them aside so God could use them for his purpose in judging. <clears throat> so the angel of the Lord tells Samson's mom that he's going to be a Nazarite. So the mama has got to start practicing certain Nazarite principles, one of those being that she doesn't drink wine or similar drink, and she doesn't eat anything unclean, because there were many beasts, there were many kinds of things that God had designated unto Israel as unclean things for them to eat. So the mama, in conceiving Samson, couldn't eat uh, anything unclean, couldn't drink wine or similar drink. And then she, uh, the angel said, For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and a razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb. So in other words, Samson didn't have to grow up and take a vow, because a lot of other Nazarites did. Samson was actually dedicated to God from the womb, and the mama had to start practicing the, the Nazarite rituals to sanctify Samson before he was born. Uh, last part of verse 5, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. <clears throat> Today's prophetic word is, who are you? Who are you? Now, what the Spirit of God wanted me to share there with you is that you have a purpose from God from the womb. You have a reason that God created you. Psalm 139 teaches us that when we are forming in our mother's belly, that's actually God there knitting your spirit and your soul and your body together. And God has a book of your life. He has a book of all the things that he wants to do in your life and then all the choices you make, you get to write in part of the book as well. So today's prophetic word is, who are you? Just like Samson, the first thing I want you to understand is that your parents can know who you are before you're born. 
And not only can they know, they're supposed to know. That's what the prophetic word is for. That's why you hear me talk about it all the time. Why it's so important that you walk in the prophetic. Because you can know who your kids are before they ever come out the womb. You can know who God has placed in the womb of the mom before you ever see the child. Okay? And not only can you know, you should know. You should seek the face of God and say, who is this you have placed in my wife's womb or in my womb if you're the mama? Show me who they are. So the mother knows how to live to prepare for the birth of the child. And so you know how to raise that child according to your purpose. So Samson, being the Nazarite, had to, again, drink no wine or no strong drink, no razor come upon his head, not to eat anything unclean, and not to touch anything having to do with corpses or anything having to do with dead. These were the requirements, and those weren't the only ones. There were some other things that had to happen. So the mama had to start living like that too. Okay? So uh, what happens when you get that kind of information? When you get that kind of information, then you immediately need to adjust your life to what God has said is the right kind of path for your life. Now, I know that's what a lot of people struggle with. I know especially when we're young, we struggle with that. But that's another reason that your parents, your mother and your father, are supposed to tell you from the womb who it is that you're supposed to be. Because if you don't know who it is that you are from a child, you know what you're going to end up doing? You're going to end up wasting time doing things that you're not supposed to do. You're going to be in relationships with people that you shouldn't be with. You're going to be doing jobs you shouldn't be doing. You're going to be living in cities and attending college and all that stuff that you shouldn't be doing because you didn't get that sense of identity from the womb like Samson did. That's not just for Samson because God is no respecter of person. That's for you. So what you're supposed to do, I'm going to release the prophetic word in a minute. What you're supposed to do, if you're already an adult and you're already into your life, what you're supposed to do going into 2020 is stop. Stop going to fast if you have to, uh, but if you can't fast, you're supposed to stop. And before you embark on another year, what you have to do is ask God, am I doing what I was born to do? Am I doing what you created me for? If you are not living in your purpose as ordained by God, you are wasting your time and wasting your life. If your parents did not seek the face of God and ask God who you were before you were born, then that's on them. But there's nothing we can do about that. We can't retroactively go back in time and fix that if that didn't happen. But as I told you, the first principle is, is that if you're an expectant parent, you're supposed to be asking God, who is this child? So that the mama knows how to live and so that you know how to prepare the child for their life. But if you're already out here, you're already growing, you're already into your life, then what you're supposed to do on this 15th of December is you're supposed to stop. And before you go into 2020, you're supposed to go before the Lord and ask him, what am I supposed to be doing for my life? Am I doing what you created me to do? Okay? And then number three, the third principle gets even deeper. And that is, and see, here's where we get in trouble. One of the things that we tend to do as humans is that we tend to compare ourselves with other people. That's a huge mistake. There is nothing living that does that but people. Did you know that? Did you know that fish do not compare themselves to ants? Did you know that rocks do not compare themselves to trees? Did you know that gorillas do not compare themselves to eagles? Did you know that lakes and ponds do not compare themselves to constellations and stars and comets? Did you know that? Because there is nothing God made that compares itself to anything else except people. We're the only creature that God has made that makes that mistake on the regular. So you might make a mistake like so many people do of looking around you and thinking that you're going to find in life some context clues about what you're supposed to do from other people. But what this verse teaches us is that God actually has a path that's laid out for you. God actually has a path that you're supposed to be walking on if you didn't know that. 
And what that means is that you've got to do what's right for you. If your parents didn't get that in your head when you were a child, you might be in your 30s, 40s, or 50s before you figure that out yourself, which means you've wasted all that time trying to be somebody that you're not trying to compare your lifestyle to other people. For example, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an entrepreneur, you are not an employee. You don't work on a clock. If you're an employee, you punch in and you punch out because you go somewhere else where your work is, you punch in, you do whatever it is that they want you to do, then you punch out and go home. And even if, you're, if you work in corporate America, even if you're salary and you take some of your work home, you have assigned tasks, things that you do, things that you're supposed to do, and then you're done for the sake of the corporation. If you're an, an entrepreneur, you are building that business. You are building that business and being an entrepreneur is 24-7. My dad taught me that. <laughs> if you're building something, it's all the time. If you are a creative person, you don't live the same as like someone who, who doesn't have the creative anointing or the creative gifting. Because when you're a creative person, you, you tend to understand things in bursts. You tend to get bursts of creativity, feeling like a gusher or a geyser rolling up. You tend to get bursts of ideas. And some days you don't feel anything. And some days so many things are running through your heart and your mind, you can hardly keep up with them, you know, writing them all down. Because that's the way you live when you are creative. If you're an athlete, it's different. When you're in season, man, you got to get in shape, which means you can't eat like everybody else eats. You can't sleep like everybody else sleeps when you're an athlete. And you got to work out God knows how many times a day. I mean, Olympic-level athletes like the gymnasts, the gymnastics girls, they work out, you know, 8, 10 you know, hours in the gym a day, five, six days a week, if not more. Same with the swimmers. They in that pool, man. So you've got to find the exact right pattern of life for you. And that's where so many people have made their mistake. You have burned up days, weeks, months, maybe years, maybe decades out of your life trying to live a pattern that isn't right for you. That's how deep this is. So once again, the angel of the Lord talking to Samson's mother gives her detailed instructions that this is where you got to live and this is where this boy got to live. So I stopped by to tell you prophetically that before you go into 2020, stop. Today's the 15th. That means you got 16 more days in December. In these next two weeks, what you're supposed to do, go on a fast, like I said, if you have to, skip a meal or give up meat or give up sugar or, or whatever it is you have to do or give up TV, whatever it is that you fast. Spend time with the Lord and ask the Lord, am I living the life you created me for? Because you might be... Uh, an architect and you were meant to be a poet. You might be punching a clock going somewhere working, you know, at an office or working at a hospital and you're meant to be writing books or plays, okay? But you're not supposed to waste one more year out your life doing what you're not supposed to do. And this verse, these verses about Samson's life teach us that you've got to find a path that works for you. So I stopped by to tell you today prophetically, stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop looking at other people's lives. For example, one of my best friends, <clears throat> one of my best friends is a steady Eddie. He's the kind of man that goes to work at the same time every day. And he's the kind of man that goes to bed at the same time every night. And he's the kind of man that eats the same meal every day because he's a steady Eddie. And some of you looking at me are steady eddies and stable maples. But some of us, <laughs> some of us are not going to be able to pull off the same diet every day. Some of us wish we could go to bed at a regular time. Some of us, you know, sometimes struggle with sweet sleep, sometimes toss and turn. Sometimes you got to work through the night depending on what it is you do for a living. Sometimes if you're a night owl, your juices don't get flowing till nighttime. And you have to sleep during the day because you tend to work all night. You see what I mean? So you got to stop comparing yourself to other people and you got to find out God's specific, specific instructions for you. And you cannot afford to waste another year out of the perfect will of God. Now, I've been beating that drum for about a month. I know I took time off last week, but I was here on Thursday with uh, No More Genies this past Thursday. I took time off last week. But I've been beating that particular drum for about a month now that you cannot afford to waste one more year outside of the perfect will of God. Not just the will of God, not just good and acceptable, 
Romans 12 and 2, but the perfect will of God. That means you're being who you're supposed to be, you're pursuing what you're supposed to pursue, you're doing what you're supposed to do, and here's the big one, you're cutting out all the fat in your life that doesn't help you get to where you want to go, that doesn't help you be who you want to be. Now, I tell you every week, there's nothing that I'm saying to my audience that I'm not doing. And that's what these last six months of my life have been like. What I just told you. Me fine-tuning to be sure that I get in the perfect will of God and me cutting out of my life things that aren't helping me get to where I want to go and not helping me do what it is I'm supposed to be doing. Okay? And so that's what you're going to have to do in the last two weeks of 2019. And if you don't hear this word, if you don't hear this prophetic word and this prophetic teaching that I'm releasing to you now, you're going to mess up and you're going to miss it. And you're going to go into 2020 out of sync with the Lord. And then you're going to end up wasting more time. And that costs you time. That costs you money. That costs you relationships. It puts wear and tear and stress on your body and your mind because you're not happy. Okay, when you're doing what you were born to do, when you're doing what you love to do, you're happy. You can do it 10, 12, 14, 16 hours a day and not even blink because it gives you joy. When you're in your purpose, it gives you energy. That's how, one of the main ways you know when you're doing the right thing. And when you're not doing that, man, working a job that you don't like or working a job you weren't meant for just wears you out. Same with a relationship. If you're with the wrong person, that relationship just wearing you out as opposed to giving you life like it's supposed to. So if you don't catch what I'm saying, if you don't hear what the Spirit is saying to the church right now, I'm not talking about next week, I'm talking about right now today, 12, 15, 19. If you miss it, or you reject it, or you don't take it seriously, then you're going to go into 2020 and wasting a whole bunch of time doing a whole bunch of things that you don't have to do. Okay? Spending one more year out of the perfect will of God and you cannot afford why do I say stuff like that? Because we don't know the way the country's going to turn. Now, I'm in America. I know I have people from around the world watching me. You know, I know I have people from Africa, people uh, from Europe. I know I have different people watching me. But you don't know the way the world's going to turn. You don't know how the economy's going to go for your country. We don't know who the next president is going to be in America. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's going to happen in 2020 that you don't know. That means you can't afford to be out of sync with what the Lord is saying, because it may be something hap that happens that would be trouble you could avoid if you were in step with Christ, okay? That's how important this word is, okay? So don't miss it. I'm trying to emphasize that. Do not miss what I'm saying, because it's that important. All right, now I'm going to release the prophetic word. For behold, my people, yea, I have brought you unto 2020. 2020 is the year of perfect vision. 2020 is a year of perfect clarity, and 2020 is a year that you get in my perfect will. For behold, allow me to have my way in your life and trim the fat off your life so I can cause you to let go of anything that's not causing you to be productive and fruit-bearing and get on the path that I want you to be on. For many of you have belittled, have turned away, have minimized my word, and when I call you a mighty man of valor, you think I'm talking about somebody else. When I'm talking about a world changer, when I'm talking about those that change the economy, change the world, change the culture, you think I'm talking about somebody else. But no, indeed, I am talking to and about you. When I call you, don't look in your past. Don't look to the right or the left. Don't look to your neighbor. Don't look at your father. Don't look at your mama. I'm talking to you. You are the next Ruth. You are the next Esther. You are the next Samuel. You are the next Moses. You are the next King David. You are the next King Solomon. You are the next Apostle Peter. You are the next Apostle Paul. Therefore, my people, I release into you a spirit of faith to get in my perfect will. Get into my perfect will. I release that spirit unto you. And the way you get in my perfect will is spend intimate time with me in the morning when you start your day. Speak in tongues. Pray in tongues until you feel the Holy Ghost take over. And let the Spirit of God do intercession for you. Let the Spirit of God speak to me and Father for you to connect you with my perfect will. That you do not spend one more day, week, month, or year out of your life out of sync with me. And as you get right in the center of my perfect will, I will open up my treasures and show you great mighty things that you haven't seen before. And finally bring you into the fullness of 
of your promised land where you can have joy every single day, says the Spirit of the living God. Okay, wow and wow. I'll receive all that. I'm going to go back and watch that myself um, because I'll receive all that because that's what God is saying to us as we stand on the cusp of 2020. So I don't want to miss it. So I'm going to do that in my life and I challenge you to do it in yours. All right? All right. That's the prophetic word for today. Now I'm going to close my eyes and pray in tongues. I ask the Lord when I do that, is there any deliverance, any demons need to be cast out, any financial words, any physical healing that needs to go forth, and is there any more prophetic words he wants me to release? If you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen now as I'm praying in tongues. All right, what's coming in my spirit is the word forgiveness. So what that means is that those of us that are believers and those of you that want to become saved, you need to receive God's forgiveness and you need to forgive yourself. So as we close out 2019 and go into 2020, do not carry the sins, the mistakes of your past into the new year with you, but receive forgiveness through the blood of Jesus. And walk in that very forgiveness. Forgive yourself. Remember that we don't, when we don't forgive ourselves, it's a form of pride. Remember that we don't, when we don't forgive ourselves, we're saying that the blood of Jesus is good enough for God, but it ain't good enough for you. So we don't want to walk in unforgiveness towards ourselves, but rather we want to walk in the blanket of forgiveness that God has provided. All right. I think that's it. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in live. Thank you uh, so much for those of you that watch me live. Thank you for those of you that are listening to the podcast. Thank, thank you to those of you that are watching on YouTube and listening to the replay. I'm excited about this word. I'm excited about being sure that I'm following the specific instructions that apply to me based on what it is I'm supposed to do according to the word of the Lord. And that's what you should be excited about going into 2020, that you have saw God's face and you've got the specific set of instructions that are custom designed for you so that when you move into the new year, you're in the perfect will of God and you're wasting no more time out of it. All right? Amen and amen. Okay, now we're winding this year down. Uh, I'm going to release my prophetic devotional uh, on the first of the year so you can begin to develop your own prophetic walk with God. I'm so excited about it and I'm so proud of it. I can't wait to show it to you. I've already got my Christmas books out there, and I got a whole bunch of things coming up in 2020, but I'll tell you about that later. So I want you to get ready for the prophetic locator word on December 31st and January 1st, so that we can be sure we hear from the Lord at the critical times of the end and the beginning of years. So again, we can locate ourselves as a body in line with Jesus. So I will let you know, uh, well, those are going to drop in. I will let you know if I'm going to be doing live words all the way through or if we're going to take a break before the new year, which is normally what happens, but I'll let you know. And then, so be sure to check my Facebook live page. So look me up on Facebook, Prophet David Taylor, and uh, always check that page so you can find out the latest as to what's going on. Okay? All right, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And remember, get your specific instructions from God so you can know who you are, the right instructions for you, and so you don't waste one more year outside of the will of God. Amen and amen. I'll talk to you soon.